Hello and welcome back to my shop. Last week a colleague of mine asked me if I could help her repair a piece of cast iron. She had to have it back the next day, so I was in a bit of a hurry. I didn't have time to set up cameras to film it, but uh, I did uh, take some snapshots, so I thought I'd show you. Here you can see where the part broke, and uh, obviously it's at uh, both sides of the screw hole where the part is uh, weakest. I decided to make uh, the repair a little bit uh, wider than the original part to make it stronger. There's a problem with welding cast iron, and the problem is that uh, it has very high carbon content. When you weld, uh, the puddle will have uh, some material from the filler rod, and it will have uh, some uh, material from uh, the melted casting. And because of the high carbon content, uh, the puddle, when it cools, will harden and be very hard, like glass. And when it cools further, uh, it will uh, shrink and uh, form cracks. One way to overcome this problem is uh, to choose not to weld it, but uh, use a bracing technique instead. And when you brace, you won't heat it to the point where the casting melts, you'll just uh, heat it up uh, to a point that is above the melting temperature of uh, the bronze that you add in your bracing rod. And that way you will never have a problem with uh, uh, the melted iron hardening when uh, cooling. Uh, the other way to repair it is uh, to actually weld, but to use a filler rod that uh, won't harden. Typically, you use uh, a nickel welding electrode, and that way the paddle will contain some iron with high carbon content from the casting, and uh, some nickel from the filler rod, and the nickel uh, will uh, make sure that it doesn't harden when cooling. And by not hardening, it can cool just like an ordinary steel and uh, not form cracks. If you're in an emergency and you don't have nickel electrodes available, uh, you could try TIG welding using stainless filler rod, and uh, the nickel and chromium in uh, the stainless from the filler rod will uh, hopefully keep it from uh, hardening when uh, cooling. Now, I have uh, these uh, nickel electrodes that I bought a while back on eBay and I also have bronze uh, brazing rods. Since this is supposed to go in a fireplace I uh, fear that uh, bronze might go soft or even melt so uh, I uh, chose uh, welding and I figured the best approach would be to first to grind it down and then add a layer of uh, nickel electrode uh, by stick welding and then build up the part with uh, MIG welding and then mill it and uh, shape it to size. So I started by taking uh, some measurements and writing them down. First I took a grinder and ground it down so I could get uh, clean metal like this. Uh, then I uh, used the nickel electrode in my stick welder and uh, added a layer of uh, nickel electrode. Uh, when cooling down this is supposed to be peened and uh, to do this I used this uh, pneumatic uh, needle hammer. And uh, if you have a compressor available and you do any kind of welding work I do recommend getting one of those uh, needle hammers. I then started adding a material with uh, the MIG welder. I just have a regular uh, welding wire in the MIG welder, but since this only gets in contact with uh, the nickel layer that really doesn't have a very high carbon content, uh, you never get the uh, hardening problem when this cools down. Anyway, I added more and more filler material until uh, I thought I had added enough and the part looked like this. The next step was of course to mill this down to shape, so I put this in the abena and uh, started milling with uh, my carbide insert uh, end mill. I really recommend getting a set of these for anyone who has a mill. So I milled out the shape of the part and it looked uh, like this. The next step was of course to mill out the groove, so I put uh, the part back into the abena and uh, milled out this with uh, a 10 millimeter uh, turbo end mill. As you can see the groove has a slanted edges so I had to uh, 
uh, put the uh, Aban milling head at an angle and uh, make uh, some passes uh, to accomplish that and uh, then I just uh, drilled and uh, countersunk the hole. Now the repair does uh, have some milling marks and uh, it looks kind of machined while the rest of the part is uh, pretty rough from uh, the sand casting. So uh, I used a needle hammer to just uh, hammer on uh, the repair to make it look a little bit rough and I think it blended in quite well. Now here's the finished part and uh, I also got a picture from my colleague and this is what uh, it looks like when uh, the thing is uh, assembled. My colleague was so happy with the repair, she gave me this bottle of uh, Swedish-made uh, single malt whiskey. Whoever considers uh, asking me for favors should take notice. Until next time, bye-bye.